I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. Bruce Lee. Hey, I'm James. And the first character I ever played that I can remember being killed was a bard who stole the treasure from the party as they fought for their lives. They let him live until they got back to town and then magic missiled him in the back and trampled him with a horse so he could not be resurrected. I'm here to talk about dungeons and design on today's episode of Dungeon Dorks. I still remember my first game of Dungeons and Dragons. I must have been somewhere around 11. I remember what happened in that game better than I remember my age at the time. I went over a friend's house and their cousin was in town. And their cousin was their dungeon master. I had no idea what that meant at the time. But one of their friends, who would normally come over to game, couldn't make it. So they shoved this character sheet in my hand and basically told me not to get him killed. And that would be really, really bad. So I was nervous as all hell and mostly stayed in the corner and didn't do much. But I got to watch and see what this was all about. And I remember one of the players had a luck blade and there was one wish left on it. And they are very hesitant to use it because they knew that the wish would be twisted and bad things could come. They were thinking about using it because we came to a room in this dungeon that had a gelatinous cube in it, a sword floating inside. And we thought maybe we wanted that sword. But it should be noted that this was in the early 90s. There wasn't an internet to speak of. And since it was my first time, I had no idea what a gelatinous cube was nor did anyone else at the table. We weren't able to just think about, oh, this, these are the gelatinous cube's weaknesses. This is how to deal with a gelatinous cube. No, we just knew there was this big cube, mostly clear, floating in this room with a skeleton and a sword in it. And so we spent a long time long time trying to make a plan of what to do. And I was hardly involved at all. But from that moment on, I was hooked. And not only did I want to play the game again, I wanted to be the dungeon master. And I don't know what drove me to even after that first game, wanting to be the person that runs it all. But I did. And my friends were kind enough to oblige. And so I made my first adventure. And I'm sure it was going to be great. I was going to start by changing all the players into animals. And they had to find the magic to turn themselves back. And at the time, we didn't use experience points. The dungeon master just decided when to give them people a level. So I ran this adventure, and everyone hated it. It wasn't good. And players don't like their characters being taken out of their hands and forced into animal bodies, apparently. 
who knew. And after that, I was like, that was a particularly hard adventure. Why doesn't everyone get two levels? And everyone was like, okay, then. It wasn't my finest moment. But why do I mention this? I wanted to talk about the basics. That Bruce Lee quote I gave at the beginning of the episode, I believe that is about practicing the basics. If, like me, your social media algorithm has a healthy dose of martial arts videos in them, you see all kinds of finger quotes, advanced techniques, all kinds of wild things, and you're like, oh, maybe I could pull that off. But just like turning your players into animals, if you don't practice the basics first before you get weird, you're probably not going to do some great. See, I, like many other people, am a sucker for novelty. I know this about myself. If I see something strange and fancy, I am curious. But the older I get, the more I realize the importance of throwing a simple left punch and a simple right punch and a simple left punch and a simple right punch over and over and over again. I think when you first start GMing, especially if you have a decent amount of experience as a player, you think about how you want to do things differently, how you want to be unique. And that's admirable. But there is room in there to stick with the basics. Don't overwhelm yourself. And this goes for if you're GMing for a group or perhaps you're getting into solo RPGs for the first time. Hit the basics. Do what you know. Do what you've seen. And when that feels comfortable, then you can practice 10,000 other kicks and change your player characters into animals. If I remember correctly, one of them was a pig. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you have any questions about anything I talked about here today or on any past episodes of Dungeon Dorks, go to crumblingkeep.com slash question and ask away, or just check the link in the show notes. Music